Alright, welcome to part 46 of Final Fantasy VIII. Now, for those of you who are wondering, how did I get to this area? In the same route that you're going to Shumi Village, there is an opening in a clearing in the bottom continent below it. Well, below the island that Shumi Village is on. You'll have to actually navigate around the grassland areas in order to get to where I am positioned right now. Here is the thing. Uh. Also, Travia Garden is home to a Chocobo Forest as well. I will eventually show that off later when I do feel like it. Or if I happen to finish the quest by the end of disc 3. However, <clears throat> our main focus is Travia Garden, which is basically nothing but plot. However, it's actually an important plot. Plot that will pretty much answer a few questions. Somewhat. However, for the time being, the last time we heard of Travia Garden, Travia Garden was completely decimated with missiles. <coughs> and now, Selfie has come in to see that her home has been completely annihilated. Now, we are going to have to hopefully cheer up Selfie and hopefully find survivors of this onslaught that was unfortunately caused by the Galbadian forces. <coughs> Excuse me. So, in order for us to start these series of cutscenes, we're gonna have to follow Selfie up that fence. Now, there's a lot of things that you can miss out on, but not permanently miss out on. Because you can always come back here anytime you want. <clears throat> However, it's best to get them while you're still here. Good news is, though, the things that you could always come back for is the draw points. <clears throat> so, let's go after Selfie. This is our team that we're going to use to go after Selfie, and don't worry, there are no random encounters in this area. First things first, get this Dundaga uh, draw point. It would definitely be beneficial to you. Secondly, before you do anything else, there's a Timber Maniac, not Timber Maniacs, but rather a Weapons Magazine somewhere around this area. No, no, wait, 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 I think I know where it is. I think I passed it up. Back up, pass me, back up. Nope, 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 pass me behind you. You passed it up, and it's really hard to see, and it's easily missable, but if you go down a little ways, come on, go down, scroll down, scroll down, and by the way, stupid letterbox. Scroll down. I'm sorry, the letterbox is covering up, but you can barely see it right before you leave the area or right before you enter the area. That is where, uh, yeah, where Squall was sitting at. You could barely see it, and it's being covered up by the letterbox. Hopefully, I can actually arrange it to where there is in the letterbox. But <clears throat> if you could see it, you will be picking up a weapons mag. And also, we got a Combat King 2 from Raijin and Fujin, and I just showed off what that was. That means Cell has now got Power Blow. Meanwhile, we now have items for uh, Squall's weapon, um, Cell's weapon, and that looks like uh, Renoa's weapon, and also the ultimate weapon for uh, Quistis, which is Save the Queen. However, her ultimate weapon is easier to find than, uh... Let's go on ahead and give Squall this strength up, and I'm gonna give Renoa strength up, since she's gonna be in my party for a little bit. <coughs> Needless to say, uh, Quistis' final weapon will be easier to find than anybody else's in the game. So, with this, you can either go with not really or just play along with it. It doesn't really matter. Squall will still be embarrassed by Selfie because, well, it's Squall and it's also Selfie. <laughs> A 
as you can see here. Even Selfie's friend is saying, maybe that's his way of showing his feelings. And that's really messed up that even a complete stranger who doesn't know you can actually tell that you're a tsundere. Yeah, Squall needs to change that attitude. Anyway, ironically enough, we find Zombie in the graveyard. So if you ever run out of Zombie, there it is in Trebia Garden Graveyard. Also, there is a Timber Maniac not too far from the draw point. You can always pick that up too. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> that person that Selfie was talking to, she just so happened to be a Triple Triad player. So we're gonna have to wait till all these cutscenes are done in, in order to actually play games with, uh... Oh, by the way, you can just... I'm also showing off the other option if I actually try to be positive. Selfie just mocks you. Just literally mocks you, saying that him being positive is not like him at all. But as I was saying, once we're done with all these cutscenes, that person right there in the plaid shirt actually has the selfie card, and she can be rather tough to play. Meanwhile, we find survivors here. Now, if we went the opposite direction, that would lead to a... Oh, and by the way, this guy also mentioned a summoning I totally forgot to get. You know, I can always go back and get him. But at this point in time, I don't feel like it. Anyway, we now have another draw point, which is Aura. So for those of you who don't know, Aura is actually like bravery from Final Fantasy XII. It increases your strength. So, if you don't have anything else to do, or if you don't feel like going to get the extra cutscene and watch Selfie uh, hang out, <clears throat> Squall will just come in and say, we're leaving as soon as Selfie arrives. So, just as soon as you leave the area, whether you talk to everybody or not, it doesn't matter, as soon as you're about to leave the area, Selfie will come in, and that's when the series of cutscenes will happen. Or more along the lines of, you gotta talk to Renoa first. Did I just say it doesn't matter? I'm sorry, you have to talk to Renoa first. Because, yeah, Selfie will appear. And after Selfie appears, then you gotta talk to Renoa to keep the cutscenes going. <clears throat> no, wait, no, I was right. You gotta leave first, then the series of cutscenes happen. Then you gotta continue the series of cutscenes with Renoa. But first, uh, Renoa has some things to say. She's pretty much skeptical about fighting. She wants to not do any, cause any bodily harm, despite the fact that she was the leader of a group that was assassinating a president way back several parts ago, earlier in this one. And not to mention, this line right here. Maybe someone really smart could come up with a way that we shouldn't have to fight anymore. Unfortunately, Renoa, that wasn't you. And it certainly wasn't your group. The Timberwolves. Or Timber Owls, that's what I meant to say. Otherwise, why did I say Timberwolves? But rather, but nonetheless, the Timber Owls were complete and total fuck-ups. And Renoa's dad was an even bigger fuck up. So, uh, needless to say, Renoa all of a sudden being the voice of reason as to not going out and committing violence is just flat out stupid. And let's not forget, she was the one who tried to put in Odin's pin, or, yeah, Ordine's pin, that's what it is. She wanted to put on Ardeen's pen to nullify the sorceress's powers and ended up being caught and tossed around like a rag doll. Yeah, that's the person who did it, yet she wants to be the uh, voice of reason. Maybe she has all of a sudden 
got traumatic experiences of being tossed around like a ragdoll and mind controlled and almost left for dead. Who knows? But one thing is for sure, she was the one who bravely tried to fight off the sorceress by herself. Even though her father tried to put her in a time locked room. Now she wants to all of a sudden sit her behind down somewhere. When unfortunately there's no reason for us to do that now because Galbadi is going to put everything they got into trying to annihilating Balam just like they did Trabia. The difference is, <clears throat> unlike Trabia, they will see to it that Balam will have no survivors, considering that Norg failed miserably. And now we come to the actual point of this cutscene. Irvin is trying to, well, that has got to be the most awkward, uh, the most awkward sentence that uh, Irvin has said. Renoa, I understand. I don't think he does, but still, as I was saying, we're about to come to the most influential and critical parts of the cutscenes in Final Fantasy uh, VIII to pretty much shed some light as to relations of all these guys and the past sequences with Laguna. <clears throat> First to start off, Irvin was actually in an orphanage. But it wasn't just Irvin that was in that orphanage too. There were several other kids as well. Like for instance, Selfie was in that orphanage. And Irvin really liked Selfie. That's a no-brainer. And Selfie back then was out of control, because guess what she wants to play? War! So even back in the day, her explosive fetish is just terrible. I don't know why, but for some reason, Selfie having a fetish of blowing stuff up is just outright insane. <clears throat> and Selfie... Pretty much, uh, triggered some memories in Quistus as well, because Quistus was there too. Irvin actually thought that Quistus and Selfie would remember him, but they definitely forgot. But it wasn't just Quistus and Selfie that was in that orphanage too. You all saw the cutscene later on, I mean, during one of Squall's uh, dream sequences. Because I think Squall was there too, and that's Zell as well. Zell remembers the being in that orphanage too. So, that leaves Squall to have to look at his past yet again. Huh. <sighs> All right, let's do this. And sadly, you can't run. Unfortunately, you're gonna be walking, so that will make things a little bit longer than usual. Oh, but that's okay, cause that'll give Squall enough time to pick up his uh, younger self. And now, <clears throat> Squall just walks that lonely road, the only world that Squall has ever known. And on and among those city streets, he comes to the boulevard of broken dreams. Anyway, now we're able to run. Let's see. Everyone now is starting to remember their old home since all of them were orphans. And they also remembered that they were setting off fireworks too. Not just that, they also remember one other person being around them too. You can take a wild guess in the blue cross stripe shirt as to who that is. If not, you can also tell by the dialogue that the jerk that is bullying baby Zell is Cypher. So even as a kid, Cypher is making Zell's life a living hell. Talk about trauma. I 
I mean, yes, Cypher may have somewhat of a heart, but he's still a dick. Yeah, the only reason why I say he may have somewhat of a heart is because he actually made friends like Fujin and Raijin. Fujin, with only one word sentences, and Raijin, who is a complete and utter idiot. But that's the point. <clears throat> Zell is pretty much being teased by Cypher all throughout his youth. Even in uh, Balam Garden, he's being teased. But the difference is, instead of being called a chicken wuss, he's being called a crybaby. So, yeah. Even when he was a kid, Zell was. I mean. Even when he was a kid, Zell was being bullied, and even when Cypher was a kid, Zell was a p I mean, Cypher was a pussy. I almost said Zell was a pussy, but Cypher was a pussy. But it doesn't matter. Let's just collect these memories and keep on going. Because there's still one more thing that needed to be revealed, and it's gonna be the biggest shocker of them all. <clears throat> Other than the fact that every last kid that was in this orphanage just so happened to be seed agents, and one of them just so happens to be uh, under Edia's control. One of the big shockers, actually, is everyone remembered that except for the time when Renoa appeared. Also, <clears throat> Everyone just realized Squall was there too. And Squall was a clingy, very, very clingy person. And after, uh, <clears throat> and after you're not gonna believe this, alone left the orphanage. Uh, yeah. Squall was pretty much on his own. Yeah, in other words, the sister he's referring to is alone. And unfortunately... <clears throat> Squall turned out to be a very abrasive and isolated person the moment alone left. But not just that, there's another plot twist. The fact that nobody could remember alone up until they all came together and recently uh, figured out something. Well, figured out two things, actually. Not to mention the fact that she was also the reason why she kept uh, bringing everybody back to the past. As Laguna, she's probably upset with the current events right now because someone is screwing up things to the point where the outcome isn't what it's supposed to be. Yeah, so in other words, this entire part was plot dump. So in order to continue the plot dump, you're gonna have to talk to Irvin. Zell was adopted, unfortunately, and Zell was probably the only one who had a successful adoption as everyone else ended up going to Garden. <clears throat> so, the strange part is that Squall honestly didn't remember being adopted, but Cypher and Squall were constantly fighting in the Garden. Every time, every day. Because even at a young age, Cypher was an attention whore, and 
Squall was the only person in the entire vicinity that actually ignored him. Selfie was actually brought here to uh, Trabia. But the real, real revelation is, and get this, because they're probably going to say this, is the fact that everyone may have forgotten due to the fact that they're all using GFs. Cypher and Squall constantly bigger the truck so that Cypher can hopefully rem have Squall remember their past. But at the same time, Cypher doesn't know much about his past either. Ah, boy, that is a lot. This is basically 30 minutes worth of plot dump, ladies and gentlemen. And if it bores you, I apologize. But, needless to say, the Guardian Forces, which sacrifices their memories in order for them to use their powers, and one other person may be the cause of them not remembering things. And, yeah. Uh, Quistus by the way, was trying to be a uh, love interest to Squall, but instead ended up being a sister figure. Unfortunately, it was an unrequited love, which in turn I feel sorry for Quistis. She still is my favorite character, however. Why? Because it's Quistis. <clears throat> Anyway, you're just gonna have to continue to talk to Quistus in order to talk to the wait, no, what am I saying? Oh yeah, to continue the cuts, so you're gonna have to talk to Quistus. But you can also hear what everybody else has to say as well. Let's see, they don't have anything else here. No, no draw points. Good. Let's talk to her. And to be perfectly honest with you. Quistus just realized, again, that key factor may have been Renoa. Cypher forgot his childhood uh, the moment he got with Renoa. Remember, folks, Renoa was originally his boyfriend. I mean, sorry, Renoa was originally her... Okay, what was I trying to say? Oh, yes. Renoa was originally Cypher's girlfriend. Then, all of a sudden, she came up to Squall. And she's been around Squall ever since. And Quistus uh, thought that, uh, it was a hopeless matter the moment uh, Renoa danced with Squall. So in other words, Renoa may have something to do with them not remembering all of their past. Another thing is, they're GFs. Everyone except for Irvin may have been effective greatly about using GFs because everyone except for Irvin had major experiences with GFs. Selfie was actually the first of the group to actually get a GF because she happened to find a GF in one of the monsters. The monster in the GF in question you may ask? Oh this is gonna surprise you. And by the way, it's an optional side quest that we're probably going to have to do before we continue. And I'm going to do that on this three. The GF in question, in order for us... Okay, <laughs> sorry if I'm getting way past myself, but the GF in question that Selfie had found was Odin. That's right. Odin was Selfie's very first GF. But she lost control of him, and we're going to end up having to find him in this three, because I'm not strong enough to deal with that now. Yeah. In other words, everyone completely lost, almost completely lost their childhood memories because of the GFs and also because of Ramnoa. But you want to know something else? The matron that was watching them. 
everyone soon find out exactly who this person is. The orphanage caretaker who just so happens to be the sorceress herself. Oh boy. The sorceress actually was, oh yeah, Sorceress Edia was actually the person who was taking care of them. What turned her into Sorceress Edia? Well, we'll eventually find that out in Disc 3. Or at least Disc 4, but mostly Disc 3. But one thing is perfectly clear. Now that everyone completely remembers who uh, Sorceress Edia was, which was the matron that was taking over, I mean, taking care of them, uh, they now are conflicted to have to fight her. But more importantly, she was the one who created the seeds of the garden in the first place. It was actually her idea to do this, and Sid took it and ran with it and had to get the money from Zorg to actually make it a dream. I mean, make the dream a reality, sorry. And as we all know how that happened, well, uh, yeah. Go figure. Now then, as everyone steals their resolve and get ready to fight the sorceress, I have a confession to make myself. There's going to be a part where the scene repeats itself. Don't worry, I actually have a, um... Uh, a caption to let you know, but, uh, the reason for that is... Well... My animals just don't know when to stop messing with things. That's the best I can say. But all in all... We're basically getting all the memories out of the way and actually finding a purpose to believe in because right now the main enemy for this disc is Sorceress Edia. And the worst part is we've got two more to go. Not to mention we only have several parts left to go. I would say about eight of them left before we're done with chapter... Well, before we're done with this too, we have eight of them left. <clears throat> but, it is ironic how fate actually lands people who were separated and now brought back together again in the same situation. The difference is, some people may be on the wrong side of fate, and the others may be on the right side. And it can be heartbreaking in those situations. No, actually, it is heartbreaking in those situations. Yeah, and about me repeating the scene, there it is. I tried to edit it, but I almost edit over the other thing. I mean, the other clip. My bad. But the point is, they're gonna have to face Sorceress Edia. They don't have a choice. If they don't, the Galbadian forces will find them anyway. They're still gonna have to fight her, but the difference is, they'll be caught off guard, and of course, they'll be utterly obliterated. So, with that said, it's up to Renoa whether she wants to stay or go. If she stays, she'll be fine here in Travia. If she goes... Well, that's one more liability we'll have to deal with. And more likely, she's gonna stay. Of course, to end this cutscene, there's snow. Of course, because we are in the mountains, where it's snowing. Yet it doesn't snow in Delang City now, does it? Nope. Ah, but nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, we are almost done with this part. So the next place we're gonna have to go to is Edia's home. 
and that is a navigation four and a half. So, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we'll enjoy the snow, and I will call it a game. This is RV Man 985. I'll see you guys in part 47 when we start the beginning of the end of chapter 2. Or should I say disc 2. But not before they have a Renoa and Squall moment. It's as if this game is constantly forcing us to love Renoa. But like I said, one more liability. Ah, boy. You don't know how much of a liability she really is. Next couple of parts, that is. So, let me go on ahead and grab Quistus and Renoa for the time being. And I'll see you guys next time because this part is coming to an end.